Hi everyone, this is the last part of my three-part series where we've been talking all things report cards. In part one, I showed you how to create a comment that you can personalize for each student and reuse year after year. In part two, I showed you how to use that template in Excel to have it automatically personalized all your comments for your entire class in under 20 minutes. And in this part, I'm gonna show you how to talk to parents and answer some of their questions that are sure to come up once they receive the report card. So if you haven't seen the first two videos, go ahead and go watch those first. I'll put the links in the description box below. And then when you're ready, come back to this one so we can move on with the conversation. Hi guys, before we get the conversation started, I wanna introduce myself in case you're new to my channel. My name is Blanca from teachertechfiles.com and I'm a learning strategist from Las Vegas. And on this channel, I wanna make technology easier for you and show you how you can use the tech to work for you and make your life a little bit easier. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. So you know how it works. You hand out the report cards, the parents open them, and immediately the questions start rolling in. If the student has good grades, they're asking, how can we keep it that way? And if the student has bad grades, they're asking, what happened? For this video, we're gonna focus on the student who's not doing so well in our class, because I found that those are the parents that come with the toughest questions, and oftentimes, not with the best attitude. But you can't really blame them. The first person they're going to ask is their child, who's probably not going to give them the true story of why they have the grades they have. So their next step is to come to the teacher. And at this point, they may be a little bit upset or maybe even a little bit mad, but here's where my tips start coming into play. Number one, remember that they're mad at the situation and not mad at you. Despite how they might approach you, if you put yourself in their shoes, the core of the problem is that their child, their beautiful, wonderful child, is not meeting grade level expectations. So always keep that in the back of your mind that they're mad at the situation, not mad at you. Number two, be proactive. Communication before the report card comes out is key. But how do you communicate with them? Well, my suggestion is to communicate with them whatever way is easiest for the parent. I know that I don't really like making the phone calls home, but I also know that parents don't really love receiving the phone calls. Some parents would prefer to hear from you via text message or email over a phone call. Number three, Keep a written record of all communication. Even if you make a phone call, you can still have a note that that communication happened. I like to email them a brief summary of our conversation. That way that written record has been generated. Number four, I said this one before, but I think it's worth repeating. Nothing in the report card should be a shock to the parents. If you've been communicating with them throughout the semester, then they should have a pretty good idea of how their child is doing in class. So when they open up the report cards, they won't be shocked. But what if you've done all that and you still have a parent that's upset with you? Here are my tips for de-escalating that situation. Number one, stay calm and really listen to their concerns. Most of the time a parent just wants to be heard. So just let them talk for as long as they need to. Number two, relate to them, empathize with them. Remember that you're trying to de-escalate the situation. So when it is your turn to talk, you can say something like, I completely understand. If this was my child, I'd be just as upset as you are too. Chances are you're gonna physically see a difference in the parent as soon as you've said that. They're gonna kind of take a deep breath and start to think more clearly because they know that you're trying to understand them. Number three, now is when you acknowledge their concerns and ask some clarifying questions. If you were listening to what they were saying, you should be able to use some of their own keywords to kind of ask some clarifying questions and acknowledge what their concerns were. It would sound something like this. I heard you say that you don't understand why Tommy's grades are so low when you see him working so hard at home. You know, he's a really bright student and he does so well when he's sitting right there with me, when we work with him one-on-one. -on -one. When you work with him at home, are you sitting right there with him? Number four is where you can give the parent a slight dose of reality, but quickly follow it up with your plan for how you're gonna help the child. So it might sound something like this. You know, unfortunately, I can't work with him one-on-one -on -one the entire day, like you can at home, but what I can do is work with him in small groups. Give a few minutes and we can kind of work out a plan now. And of course they're gonna say yes, they've already taken the time to come see you. This is where you can move on to step five and give the parents true tangible solutions that you can actually and realistically implement in your classroom. I like to give parents options that put some of the accountability back to them. So I'll say, at school I'll do this, and at home you can do this. This is also a really good time for you to type up your plan and have them signed and dated since they're right there in front of you. 
You can use this as an informal academic or behavioral plan, or just keep it in your files as meeting notes. The biggest point I want to get across is to communicate with the parents before the report cards come out. Never make them feel blindsided. If you can do that successfully, then you won't have very many parents upset at you. I really hope that you found these three videos helpful for you. And remember that I really want this YouTube channel to be a community, not just a subscriber list. So let's go ahead and get the conversation started in the comments below. Which of these three videos that I've posted have been the most helpful for you? I can't wait to hear from you. Also, if you like these videos and you would like to get more tech tips, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you next time.